Welcome back to the Shine Within podcast. I have a guest here. Her name is Heather Ramo. She is a personal brand strategist and storytelling marketing expert for ambitious and impactful and heart-led female entrepreneurs. As the founder of Story Tell Her, <laughs> she helps her clients build aligned and magnetic personal brands and market their business by sharing relatable and powerful stories. Heather is a frequent speaker on the emotional artistry of storytelling, releasing shame and ju judgment from your story, and navigating entrepreneurship as an empath. She has been featured on numerous podcasts and published in Medium and Authority Magazine. Welcome, Heather. It's so nice to have you. Hi, Gina. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. And I totally love what you do. As someone who has a background of drinking and was very shy and timid and didn't want to share her story, <laughs> that was me. And it wasn't until, you know, I just was a lot of prayer and meditation that I was like, you know what, this story, need, this message needs to be told. So I totally appreciate what you do. And I just want to know a little bit about you and your background and how you became an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So yes, my background is in corporate America. Um, I really did in many ways what I was supposed to do. Um, you know, I'm a millennial. And so the message that was really given to me growing up is to get really good grades in high school, go to a top university, get that job and have that house, with the white picket fence, 2.5 kids, all of that. And so I wanting to be someone who just did what I was supposed to do, who followed the rules, who, who, you know, followed this path that was clearly laid out for me. That's exactly what I did. And I really did have it going for me, you know, by my, I'd say mid twenties, I had a six figure salary at my consulting job. I was taking these luxurious vacations to Bali and Spain and Argentina and like filling that love of travel that I had. Um, I had this great career path, basically a one-way ticket to the top to what I'd always, always worked for and been told was the pinnacle of success. And let me tell you, Gina, I was so unhappy. I was so unfulfilled. It just didn't feel like me at all. And so um, I kept doing it because I didn't know how to change that path, or I didn't know what else to do. Um, and I really allowed my life to, to drive forward on autopilot because I thought that what I was receiving from that corporate job, you know, the great salary, the good benefits, the PTO, I thought that security was enough of a sacrifice for my happiness. I thought if I had what I needed in order to keep a roof over my head and, and, you know, travel and, um, basically be able to pay my bills that that was enough. And I lived that way for many years until my world came crashing down. It was 2017 and my dad passed away. And I realized in that moment for, I think the first time that life isn't forever, like your time will come to an end eventually. And that was the start of the catalyst to change my life. I wish I could say that in that moment, I just did a 180 and left corporate and found myself and find found my passions and all of that. But in reality, it, it took many, many years for me, step by step, piece by piece to build the life that I have built now. Um, so kind of long story short, you know, that was the catalyst to me making several changes to really dive into understanding for the first time, who I really am, not who I think I should be, not who I was told that I should be, not who, you know, everyone else is, is telling me to be, but who I really am. And I started that personal development journey, which just innately led me to entrepreneurship, to starting my own business, to really taking the reins and taking control back of my own life. Um, so it's been the most beautiful journey and really a lot of the lessons and insights and heartaches that I have learned along the way have been packaged up into what what I do for my business, how I help clients. It's it's really that personal journey of self-compassion, self-understanding. And a lot of that is done through both personal branding and storytelling, which is what I do day to day now. That is so beautiful. And I'm so proud of you and so happy that you found your passion and you went for it. Because it's yeah. very hard. We feel like we are told like how what to do, what to say, how to dress. And we get these perceptions like, 
is this me? <laughs> this yeah. is not me though. And then you don't feel like yourself. And then yeah. things around you just don't add up and everything just goes chaotic. And then our mind goes chaotic, but you took the step and you found yourself and you found your passion. Now, what is personal branding? Yes, personal branding is at its core, a deep exercise and lifelong journey of not only understanding who you are, but being able to portray that to the world, to your clients, to your friends, to your family, to your community, to whoever that might be. It's really, it's two parts. It's the act of understanding and honoring, and then the act of portraying and influencing. And so not only do you get this beautiful understanding of who you really are, and, and what I mean by that is certainly not just what you do, but it's what you believe in. It's what your values are. It's what you're afraid of or what scares you. It's how you inspire hope in others and, and all of that wrapped up into one. So it's a, it's an experience and it's an energy. And then it is, okay, now that I know that, how do I portray that into the world? How do I influence the way that others perceive me and think of me? And when they hear my name, what images come up, what personality. So that is broadly the act and power of personal branding. That is so beautiful. <laughs> so personal <laughs> branding, I love your title, Story Tell Her. Yes. <laughs> that is so brilliant. I love that. Yes. Now let's Thank talk you. about uh, storytelling her. <laughs> yes. So with your, your clients, and um, they're all females, right? Yes, correct. How do you get them to share their story authentically? Hmm. So yes. Ooh, this is a good one. This is so, there's so many parts to this. So the first thing that I will say is that telling your story is a gradual process. And one thing that I always want to make so clear with my clients or even just anyone in my space is that I'm not here to push. I'm not here to expose. I'm not here to make you feel uncomfortable or share something that you are unwilling to. I'm here to help guide and ask the right questions and prompts and listen and hold space and support for you to uncover your story at your own pace and to your own level of comfort. And I always start with that because innately when you are thinking about telling your story, there are immediate voices in the back of your mind that pop up with that fear of judgment. As humans, everything that we do really is to be loved and accepted and seen and avoid judgment. We run from it. We're scared of it. So in order to start, especially with women, helping women think about how do I want to tell my story, it always starts with that process of releasing shame and releasing judgment and just being witness to what you have experienced in your life what you have gone through in your life, good, bad, ugly, all of it. It starts with being a witness to that. And then as you start to find power and um, joy and passion and sometimes anger as well, as you start to feel that in your story, you allow yourself to be visible and tell it. So that's the first thing that we always do is find that power and release that shame and judgment. And that is not something that you just check off the list. It's a constant, constant process. And it takes some deep healing in order to do that. It totally does take some deep healing. As I was writing out my story, it was like 20 pages. And this yeah. is, I mean, the story doesn't end. <laughs> it continues yeah. and continues and continues. Yeah. I felt so much emotional release. Yeah. And when I was in, this is my Bible study that I actually had to share my testimony. This was like the very first time mm -hmm. that I was like, you know what? This is it. I'm going to do this. And I was with the group. I'm getting cold chills right now. <laughs> that means this yeah. has to be aligned or something's true about yeah. it. <laughs> well, I know it's true because it happened to me. But uh, the women were all around and I was like all nervous and shaking and just like, but as I was reading it, one, one of the ladies, she was just like bawling and crying. She's like, oh my gosh, I was praying about, because I knew you were going to be doing the story today. And I know about your background. And I know about your drinking. And yeah. I literally wrote, she because she sings and plays guitar, and she's, I really wrote a song, and it's exactly what you were, it aligned to exactly what you were sharing. And wow. she was like, more crying than I was, <laughs> <Bless her heart. laughs> but she was just like, she felt that connection. And I think a lot of times when we do tell our story, 
other people can relate and they could be like, Oh, wow. I'm not alone. Uh, yeah. Somebody else has gone through that. Maybe I should share my story as well. And yeah. I just love how I was able to share my story, brought it out. And then everyone was like, you need to share your story everywhere. And I was like, no, no, this was the hardest thing for me to do. But now I think it has helped me even as an entrepreneur myself reach out to many people who need to hear my message. They always say yeah. your mess is your message. And it was yeah. true. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. So many points I could jump off of there, but I do think there is an undeniable collective and healing and transformative power of storytelling and sharing our own stories. You know, if we think about it, stories are some of the oldest language that we have before we had the means of writing or capturing these ideas. You know, these stories were passed down from generation to generation to generation. And ultimately, like what you said, stories are the truest and most genuine source of building connection. And I, I know that right now, both in business, both in personal life, just in the world in general, as humans, we are craving more of that true, genuine connection with each other. And it can be challenging to forge those connections over the internet or over social media because we're not in person together. We can't feed off each other's body energy and um, you know nonverbal communication. So building those stories or telling those stories is able to build that emotional connection because those emotions within you, what they do is signal that this is a person that I can trust. This is a person who I can be safe around. And this is someone who I see my own experiences mirrored in theirs. And that builds a camaraderie that is so genuinely pure and true. That's what people are looking for today. We're missing a lot of that in life. It is true. We I definitely, especially during the COVID time, I felt so okay. disconnected from everybody. And it's like, I felt alone, <laughs> even though I was, you know, I had my kids and my husband with me. It's just like that, that connection, it's that emotional connection that I had with like my coworkers, you know, my women from the Bible study group that I was at, yeah. uh, from even church, I think we're closed down for church everywhere. And it was very difficult. And so, but I think during that time, I was also doing a lot of journaling and writing a lot. Um, do you think that journaling is a good idea for, for someone who wants to start maybe writing their story, uh, maybe yeah. recommend to journal every day? What are your thoughts on that? Yes. Yeah, so something that I love to do every day is free writing. It's it's morning pages is what a lot of people refer to it as if, if any of the readers or the listeners are familiar with morning pages. But it's really just a stream of consciousness. It's writing whatever comes to your mind and letting your mind kind of take you to the next topic and the next topic and the next topic. That's a great way to just let ideas Low. But if you need a little bit more structure, I definitely would agree. Journaling is fabulous. And you can start with some prompts about, you know, think of a time that I made a really challenging decision. What helped me make that decision? Um, when was I most fearful or most scared in my life? When was I happiest? Um, what surprises me? What do I, you know, stand for? What are my values? All of those things you can start writing and journaling. And that inevitably, as you do that, helps you build your story. It does definitely build your story. Yeah. Now, can you just share the process you take your clients? Um, do you do like reels or do you help them with uh, like some type of creative writing activities? Uh, how do you, what's yeah. the process you take your clients? Absolutely. So we definitely do a lot of discussion based story uncovering. So I often find that it's easier to just talk things out and then either, you know, take your voice notes or transcripts and then start writing from there because we often talk a little bit more casually than we write. We often let ourselves speak without, you know, fear of editing or without fear of how we're going to sound. So we can do a lot of discussion based. And I often start with thinking about at a high level, when you're looking to build, let's take personal brand you ask yourself three questions. So who was I or who have I been? What identities or what versions of myself have I been in the past? Who am I now? What matters to me now? What do I think and view and feel now? And then the third is who am I becoming? What is that vision that I have 
for my life. Because when you're building a personal brand, not only do you want someone to understand who you've been and who you are, but you also want them to know where you're headed. You want them to also feel inspired by your vision or the direction that you're heading in, what you're building. So those are our three very, very high level questions to get started with. So we can talk that out in sessions. Typically, those are covered over two to three sessions, um, or that can absolutely move into writing. So typically, I'll provide a set of uh, various prompts or ideas to just get those ideas flowing. Um, and then my clients will work on writing out some of those answers or more, maybe journaling a little bit more on that. And that often leads to both pieces of the bigger brand story, but also is great to be repurposed for social media or email emails or podcast talking points, any of that. So that's a, that's roughly how we would get started. Yes. So I was just thinking about repurposing because yes. I remember <clears throat> I was in network marketing as well as, you know, my own business helping women um, through their alcohol dependency. And I remember my mentor through the network marketing, we had to start doing these reels. <clears throat> we did like a, yes. a before then and now. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. he actually helped us like start developing our own personal story yes. with the product and bringing in the products there. Yes. <laughs> and it was yeah. so neat because I, I, first off, I didn't like being on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so I will literally say that he helped me with <laughs> going onto camera. But I, I feel like when you're able to tell your story on camera as well, oh yes, you feel so much more powerful because you're like, put it out again. I'm getting goosebumps. I don't know. <laughs> you know something's talking to me. <laughs> My spirit within is talking to me. You're like, yes, sister, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's so powerful because, like I was mentioning, like when the message goes out there, it's going to reach the people that need that need that it needed to reach. Yeah. Yes. Oh, a hundred percent. I love what you said about sharing your story on camera or sharing it through spoken word. So depending on really what my clients goals are, I have many, many clients that want to be on stages that maybe they're scared of video, but they want to use it. So yes, we absolutely work on, you know, how can you break up your story into say like, five parts of your story to put on reels or to put on TikTok or, you know, something like that in terms of video content, we absolutely can work on that. Um, if you are someone who perhaps wants to lean more into email marketing or writing, or you don't want to be as visible, we can absolutely still work with that. There's so much power in writing as well, but you're absolutely right, Gina, when you speak your story. And I think what's so much more impactful is not only when you speak it to the camera for social, but when you speak that to an audience or when you when you're able to look into somebody else's eyes and tell your story and and feel that it is being it is resonating and it is being reciprocated like that is the most powerful feeling. And so I, I do have some professional speaking in my background. I'm not a speaking coach by by per se, um, but I do help with speaking delivery, um, you know, putting together presentations and thinking about, you know, what, what I said earlier, storytelling really is an artistry. So it's not only just knowing the story is like your canvas, but it's how do you deliver that as the art? It, there's a lot of creative writing and copywriting tactics and skills that I teach clients. There's a lot of public speaking and, and you know, presentation delivery that I teach because storytelling is that artistry of, you know, being able to create tension and then pull back a little bit and tease and, and connect. There's all of that really beautiful artistry when it comes to storytelling. So I, I get into all of that with my clients too. That is so neat. And you reminded me, <clears throat> I had met a lady who shared with me that she does storytelling through like theater. Yeah. Like, it's like poetry, but they're like really expressing themselves and they yes. will release certain things, even show their angle, cry, everything. And yes. I'm like, what a wonderful idea, because here I needed to like punch something <laughs> when I was yes. very angry, but to go out there and be around trusted people and then just kind of release that energy and tension. Like I said, I feel like when you do tell your story, you, it's like therapy, this therapy. Oh, it absolutely is. And, you know, that's that's one of the, I'd say, kind of 
paths of how I ended up here is throughout my life, whenever I was going through something challenging, or if I felt weird or alone or scared or rejected or judged like anything, um, I was so shy as a child that I really learned to write. I, I found solace in writing and creative expression in that way. So um, I also have loved theater for most of my life. I was very big into acting and theater back in high school, and it really um, helped me with a lot of my public speaking and, and kind of presence to this day. Um, but for me, it's that creative expression. It's it's that therapeutic process of sharing your story. And that makes me think of one of the, I'd say, biggest fears or questions or concerns or, or like things that I talk with clients and even in my DMs about is like, how do I know if I've gone too far in sharing my story? How do I know, how do I not overshare? And how do I not put something out there and then feel that immediate ick and that like, that kind of sinking feeling of, oh, did I say too much? Or, or, you know, should I have said that? And, and I kind of, I tie that in because I am a chronic oversharer on my social medias. I share a lot, a lot. Um, of some personal things and a lot of like really challenging writing and, and heartache that I have been through. And so for me, I don't know if this will land, but what I always share is that think about you as the, the carrier of that message. I think about me sharing that message and who needs to hear it. I think about the ability for me to heal and release what I'm holding on to by sharing it, by, by having someone else be witness to that piece of my story that is perhaps really challenging and really sad. But when someone else bears witness to that, I'm able to release and heal a little bit from that. And the other thing I'd say is always ask yourself if if what you are sharing, is it true and accurate in your life, which it probably is if you've written it, but could it help someone else in this moment feel less alone or feel seen or heard or validated? And if, if you are able to hit those two things, I say share it because you just never know who might need to hear that message and whose life you can impact. And then that reverberates and reverberates and reverberates. So it's just so powerful. Yeah. What was those three again? I'm going to write these down. It was uh, seen, seen, heard, validated, understood, less alone, all of that. I love that. <laughs> I hope, hey, I, I loved, oh, like I told you before when we were talking, I love writing things down. I, yes. I just on pen with paper, yes, not so too. much the computer, right? It's like two notebooks literally right here. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love writing things down. And what yes. I should do is um, I eventually want to write a book. Yes. Do you too. help? Yes. And do you help clients? Yes. get into their story with because you're a your writer yeah. like I have no idea about writing you're highly skilled <laughs> with speaking yeah. and writing that is not like my my expertise at all but yeah. um I always wanted to write a book and I have no idea like even where to start or how and like you were mentioning like how much is too much but I think that too much needs to be put out there because yeah. it is your story why hold back and I remember speaking to, to another friend of mine who was like, yeah, I'm writing a book now, but I'm not sure if I want to put this down. And so she was really concentrated and focused and like, okay, meditating and okay, I'm just going to do it. She said, I'm just going to do it. And yeah. set her, I don't know if it was her spirit, something led her to write it out. And she's like, yeah, I don't even remember writing it out. But when I went to take it to the uh, editor, she says, I didn't even need to edit anything. It was just perfect. I'm like, good. <laughs> so that just goes to show you that being yourself and just being raw and out there is actually going to help somebody. Yes. And what I'd say on that, when you were talking about, you know, we, we actually might need that too, too much. I think what is so fascinating in watching recently, especially in the online business and social media world, there has been a huge push of all these experts and coaches telling you how important it is to share your story. Like you have to share it. 
get out there and share it. Authenticity sells like all of these things, but there's a missing piece to that. And it's how do you actually go from knowing you need to share your story, but then actually sharing it, knowing how much to share. So what I've seen from that is we see a lot of stories being shared that not that they are wrong or bad, they're just filtered and they're just, they're polished or the, the edges are softened because people don't know how much is too much. But the challenge with that is that we actually, as consumers of the story, we need more details to be able to see ourselves in that story. So it's not enough to just say that I felt nervous or I felt scared, or this was new and I didn't know what I was doing. As the consumer, as the reader of that story, like we need more. I need to know how you were feeling. I need to start taking what's happening within your body, you know, your, your sensations, if your palms are sweaty or if your stomach is in knots, when you tell me that, then I start to feel that and I start to resonate more with your story. So it is by no means that you have to expose every skeleton in the closet. I would, I do not uh, argue for that. I think there are many, many boundaries that I also help clients set boundaries with what you're going to tell from your story, but you have to be able to be real and raw and there enough for someone to actually be able to see themselves in your story. So that's why it's so important to go at least one level deeper, not too deep, but even just, just one level and see how that feels. Oh, that's so great. Now, are you doing any workshops? Cause I'm like, let me <laughs> sign me up. Are you yes. currently doing any? Yes. So I will have one, depending on when listeners are listening to this episode, I will have a workshop the second week of June, I believe. I'm still fishing out those dates, um, but I will have a workshop the second week of June. So if you are listening before then, you can absolutely register. We'll include the link. But then if you're listening afterward, you can just get the replay of that. That is so cool. And do you just, is it on Zoom or is it in person? These are on Zoom for the time okay. being. My absolute dream is to do in-person workshops. So that is coming. But right now we just use the power of Zoom. <laughs> yes, we were even talking about retreats before. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, retreats, yes. That'd be so great. I, I, I totally wanted to collaborate with you because I'm like, there's so many women who are in the process of healing and, and in recovery from their alcoholic disorder. And I feel like if they had someone to help them share their story, because for me, I had a mentor, right? And so she, ta she taught me confidence and all these other things in mindset. So I was ready to, ready, not ready, <laughs> to read, share my story. But I yeah. think you'd be so good to help women who are in the process of wanting to share their story, but are afraid to. What would you tell somebody who is afraid to share their story? Oh, yes. That's such a good question. The first thing that I would say is it's okay to be afraid to share your story because that's a part of yourself. That's a piece of who you are. It's so intimate. I would say it's okay to be afraid. You are in complete control of how much that you are sharing and just Think about the potential that your story has to impact others. Um, it's, it's a process. That's why I love to, to work with clients and help them, guide them through this process. And I'm really excited to share that I am actually in the process of getting certified as a breathwork facilitator and coach to be able to use breathwork as a modality to help women uncover their story, unblock their story, and find that confidence and that self-assuredness to share it. So I, I am just so excited and I know that that will bring immense value to what I already do. Oh, that is so powerful breath work. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. <laughs> that, is, that is so awesome. Breath work is very powerful. Let me tell you, so because powerful. I notice like my body starts twitching and I'm getting cold chills again. <laughs> This is like the third time. This is a good podcast. <laughs> but like, I'm so sad. <laughs> I, I normally don't get cold chills, but for today I'm just getting cold chills. It's not even that chilly outside. Um, <laughs> when I'm doing breath work and I just notice my body, there's energy that's being released. And yes. I think your, 
your mind is telling your heart is telling you your spirit is telling you and leading you your intuition is leading you to how you should share your story you'll start thinking all these different ideas and what to do next and all this so i'm so happy that you're going to be doing breath work as well <laughs> so exciting it really, it is really quite the transformative practice. I, I have never personally used another modality that has been so transformative, truly to the core in my own life. And I feel like everybody needs to experience it. I think it is absolutely the future of both business strategy and alignment and personal optimization. And, you know, for me, I think the, the power of breathwork as well is that when we think about telling our stories and when we're fearful, it, again, it's often related to that fear of judgment. And what that means is the fear of being visible and being seen for who you truly are, because your brain starts telling you stories and thinking about, you know, what if I share this very vulnerable, intimate piece of me and someone else judges me for the real me? You would wish that you have kept up that mask and that facade. And so what breathwork does is actually rewire your ability to feel safe in being visible. It actually changes, you know, your body chemistry. And I'm by no means a breathwork expert, but I, I just, you know, I'm a novice and I've, I've learned the basics, especially through moving into my certification process. But if you've ever felt just really frustrated with maybe like your mindset work isn't working, or maybe that journaling isn't quite getting you there, or maybe there's still those voices in the back of your mind, like telling you not to share breathwork could be something for you to consider as well, because it's so much deeper. So I'm, I am so excited to be able to serve my clients in that way. That is awesome. <laughs> I love that. And uh, yes, with the, being your authentic self, how does one become their authentic self? Because like they're trying to be people pleasers or they're, they're people pleasers, or they're trying to just be somebody that probably isn't even a good role model in the long run, but because they're famous, you celebrity, <laughs> whatever that it is, yeah. how does one become authentic? It is a journey. It is, I'd say, lots of parts unlearning of who you thought you were supposed to be, who you were told that you were supposed to be based on the identities that you either have in your life currently or have had. So often there's a lot of unlearning when it comes to, say, being a corporate worker. Often there are certain stories that if you're a mom, you tell yourself about what moms can and can't or should or shouldn't do. And so finding your authentic self, one, is a, is a lifelong journey because the beauty is that you do change, you do grow. And that does not mean that you are losing your authenticity. It actually, when you're growing and changing, it means you're finding your authenticity. So it's a lifelong journey of compassion. Curiosity is a big one. We often, you know, even thinking about how, when is the last time you gave yourself permission or time to just sit and explore who you are? You know, how often have you really thought about like what you stand for or what your values are or, you know, how you inspire hope in others or how you dismiss fears? I mean, how often do we really think about those things for ourselves because we have so many other things to do in life? So it's it's a curiosity um, as well. And, and then I think there's also just bits and pieces of really listening to that wisdom or that inner knowing or that intuition, whatever you call or consider that voice inside of you that we all have, I think that is an innate connection to your personal brand. Um, so it's a process, but it's, I, I think it's the most powerful and important work as humans and as business owners, especially those of us who use our, our face and our stories and our personal brands to do this work, not only will you stand out and will people think of you in a certain way, but you will also just have the most genuine and authentic sense of self and confidence. And that allows you to live a more aligned and joyful life when you're not always comparing yourself to everyone else. It's just really powerful. That is so true. Yes, I used to compare myself all the time when I was young. Like, oh, I didn't get enough good grades. Oh, she's skinnier. <laughs> oh, she's prettier. <laughs> oh, she's more athletic. Because I was an athlete in high school, and I would always compare myself. Like, oh, why can't I run faster than her? <laughs> but you yeah. know what? Everyone has their own gifts. Yes. I feel. And I think they just need to, like you said, 
curious, be curious, explore yourself. And one of the things that I always tell myself is, you know what, do things that make you feel uncomfortable, but yeah. positive things, nothing negative yeah. or dangerous, of course, but yeah. positive things. And you can see what you're actually capable of doing. Yes. I think I was sharing with you before I was even an entrepreneur, like I was in the massage business for, I still am in the massage business by the way, for like over 15, 16 years. So wow. I never had to use a computer, a laptop, anything. I just used my phone for checking emails, uh, yeah. anything I need to use for like what we normally use on a computer. So here I come into the entrepreneur business and then here I'm trying to discover and learn, like, I don't know how to use uh, uh email marketing i don't know how to <laughs> do an email signature i don't know how to do you know i did it on my own and i didn't know i was capable of doing that and now i can actually help others as well i'm not i'm not a pro trust me <laughs> but i'm able to like even with these podcasts like who the heck thought i would ever do a podcast so first off i'm not the greatest speaker like you are but i'm very <laughs> my energy is very high and it's just it. <laughs> transfers to everybody that is one of my gifts is that i have like that energy transfer where we're like i can feel your energy you know oh, yes, I you. <laughs> 100 <laughs> percent. and so that is one of my gifts and uh, so yes. so i never I didn't like public speaking i never really was good at writing and i don't like doing things that are sharing my business but i'm doing all of that now <laughs> so you'll be surprised yeah. and so i love what you share about how you can start exploring be curious you know into yeah. discovering your yourself and do things that you've never done before <laughs> yes well if you think about it everything that you are doing now that you're really good at at one point you didn't know how to do that either and so it, you know it's it's that quote that's like you have to be really bad at something for long enough to be good at it to get great at it and i think we have you know as as we graduate like high school and college and we get out of that traditional schooling environment i think a lot of us lose the ability to put ourselves out there to learn or to be bad at something to then get good. I think there's a lot of pride that is wrapped up in that. And, and but again, it, it, that all starts with those of us who believe otherwise leading the movement of trying new things and and being visible in, in us trying new things, sharing the story of that to encourage others to do the same. And I think it's a huge shame when someone has a dream that they don't act on because it's new or it's different or, you know, they don't, they don't know what to do next. And, and there's this really quite powerful quote that I will paraphrase because I don't remember exactly how it went, but it was something along the lines of my greatest fear is on the day that I die, I meet the person that I could have become. And I think that is so powerful when it you is. think about what are you not doing because you're afraid to fail. Wow. And, and then you're just like, I could have been that person. <laughs> what was yeah. I doing all this time? Yeah. So that is so beautiful. Do you, do you know who, where that quote came from? I, I love that. I have no idea. It's one of those quotes that I've heard from, you know, someone else shared it on their podcast that someone told them. So I don't know who the original speaker is, but, and I don't, again, I don't know how many games of telephone that has <laughs> right, been played, telephone. but I think, you know, the message stands. And I think about that quote a lot whenever something seems really hard or whenever I, you know, want to give up or stop or whenever I start telling myself that maybe it's too much or maybe I can't or maybe, 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 blah, 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 any of those things. I, I always, always think about that. So it's, it's quite powerful. Oh, I love that. Well, is there anything else you would like to share with the audience at all about? Oh, oh my goodness. I feel like we've covered so many thing, good things, Gina. I think you know, it's, it's really, I just encourage people to start wherever makes sense for you when it comes to personal branding and storytelling. If you are in the camp right now where you just want to think a little bit more about who you are, maybe get to know yourself. Maybe you're feeling like you are very lost and you actually don't know who you are anymore. I was there about five, six years ago. And the first step that I took, that first baby tiny step is to get curious and to start thinking and asking those questions about who I really am. 
And then it's, then it's starting to share and, and be witness to that story or to that journey and that transformation. Maybe even, that's even just writing or that's speaking into the, the voice note, uh, voice note app in your phone or, or speaking to your partner or whatever that might be starting to share your story. And then from there, it's really thinking about how do you build a life that's in alignment with that? So it's starting wherever makes sense for you, but also just remembering you are fully in charge and you have the ability to learn anything new, to try anything new, to be bad at anything new. Um, and you are, you're just, you're in control. So, um, I think that's it. I mean, I've got on my website, I have several different resources. If you're interested in even getting started with personal branding or, you know, how do I become a better storyteller? How do I think about telling my brand story? If you go to my website, there are tons of free resources and I'd love to, to help. So you can always feel free to DM me or message me too. My inbox is wide open. So um, I just am here to help women uncover their stories, embody who they are, and then share them to connect with others. Beautiful. And I will definitely have those in the show notes. Uh, where can they follow you? Yes. Yeah, so I am on Instagram all the time. Love hanging out over there. And my I'm at, at Heather underscore Ramo. So first underscore last name. Um, and then as well, a great place to connect with me is my email community. So Sunday stories, I'm completely obsessed with this email community. Once a week, I share a personal story from my own life to really inspire ideas and, and provoke action and um, encouragement for the upcoming week. So that is a great way to stay connected with me as well. Awesome, Heather. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we will be in connection for sure, because okay. I think you and I were, will work well with helping yeah. women just share their story and yes. that retreat. <laughs> yes, there's many collaboration <laughs> <The> opportunities. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Gina. Thank you.